All right. Hi, this is Kelly Borsheim. Uh, the the um, spray foam that I added here to enlarge the figure he wants all the arms and everything uh, is hard. Pretty hard. Hard enough. It can, it can support the weight of the clay and also the two molds that I have to make later. Now, what I want to do is shape this. So, the shoulders here, I took some measurements according to the width of the neck here when he was uh, a larger man. And I can see that if I put that point there, this one is a little bit closer it seems, but I need to go out here with the arms. And if I take, take that measurement again, and then go from here to there, I've got to put a little bit more out here. Now he wants the thing cut off like this, but that's a little bit of a problem uh, because the board is so small. However, I'm going to work all that out. It's just, um, whatever. All right, so now I come to the back, and you can see all of this is really rock hard, even where it looks, the texture's here softer because I ended up pulling off a piece that um, didn't see the air the same way. Anyway, um, now what I want to do is go back to the beloved profile, because that's going to give me the information. I have one of the photos here. What you're hearing right now is a combination of the fire going as well as I'm do using a double boiler to melt some wax, some, just some paraffin, cheap wax. So I'm looking at the posture here on the back. From, from about this point of the deltoid here, the shoulder goes pretty much straight, the back goes straight down, and um, there's a slight curve going up into his neck. But because I'm doing sort of a classical Greek sculpture thing, I want to make him have really good posture. That means that the arm is going to be on the back half of the center of the body. So all of this stuff here, this has to go away, you see? Because I'm not having his arm come forward like this, I just want to have it come straight down. And uh, then I can see I need a little bit more up here to go kind of back a little bit, give it some little kind of curve, maybe to this point. But then the rest of it's going to go fairly straight down. So, um, I've just got a fairly standard knife with serrated edges, edges, and I'm going to cut. This piece already came off because of the way I had goofily done it. And I also have the lines drawn at the bottom where I wanted the back to show up, so that's, I'm using that as well. And you see how nice this just cuts? It's, it's gorgeous because it's lightweight and yet it's also um, really, really strong. Alright, so let's pull this guy out of here. I want to get this where you can see it, but I don't, maybe I should come over to this side. Well, I can't do, really do that. So, I'm just going to follow the curve here. This is going to be an extra. It's not a tumor. My goal here is to cut just enough, but not so too much that I end up having to put a lot of clay here because it's the clay, remember, that I'm trying to save. What am I going to do with that? All right, so as we get, I can cut this, this little bit. I can cut off later if I need it. Right now I'm just going to leave it. So I'm looking at this curve here, and you can see if I roll it over this way. How about that? Maybe that would work as a profile. My original line is that it comes over this way. Now, if he's got an arm and it's kind of on the back side of his head, let's make it go about down to here, okay? Because he's going to have an arm that's larger than mine. But it's obvious that there is no sense to have this bulk here, okay? So, I'm going to cut. Let's give him an arm that goes like the, the deltoid here. So right about here, let's start. I'm cutting at a curve because, of course, the arm is a rounded cylinder type shape. And I'm going to cut right here. It's really quite easy. I, I actually love this idea. I got this idea back in the days when um, I was at Marble Symposium in Marble, Colorado. Nice group of sculptors there. And they had just started the whole 3D imaging things. And there was a company that went up there to advertise to all of us sculptors, of course, about their program. The thing is that the major part of the work was doing the programming correctly. And um, that was something I didn't have the ability to do. However, I was just so keen to try this idea. And so my husband at the time, John, built an enlarging and reducing machine. Uh, the only thing he couldn't do was one-to-one. 
but he set up my model here and the thing I wanted to enlarge because I didn't need to make something small, I want to make things big. And um, it was this amazing thing that he built out of stuff he had at home, including a bicycle chain to get the gears to be turning. And then he made an arm and it was a pointer on one end and a blade on the other. But we used the idea of cutting out a foam because, um, and you can make bronze sculptures out of it, or you can make a maquette even to carve a marble. It's just a, a lightweight, durable kind of thing. So I did several things. I didn't, I didn't finish some of the projects. I wanted to do my Together and Alone piece much larger than I did. Now this bulge here doesn't make any sense, does it? So I'm going to round that a little bit more. Because the next step is what the reason I'm boiling wax right now is because, do you see how holy all this stuff is? So all of these holes here, I don't want my clay, my expensive clay, to go sticking into that. It'll stick, and it'll keep pushing in, but if I want to retrieve it later, it's going to cost a lot of money and, and a lot of time to recoup it. I'm not, I, I, I have a whole bag there of stuff that's all mixed together, and I'm wondering if I can maybe heat it up a little bit to sort of make things fall apart, but I'm not really sure about that, and I'm not sure I want to burn this material because I think it might be a little bit dangerous to breathe. But right now I'm going to sort of follow along with the original curve line that I made here. And not, again, I'm not. another reason I'm not worried about the bottom is because the client wants to stop the portrait here, making more of a square composition. Um, so that's what we're going to do. And, okay, now here I don't feel like I have the arm and the shoulder here. And that's a great opportunity to take something like this and plug it in here, you see. And I may have to cut it or cut something else to put something in. And I can just use metal, um, just little pieces of thin metal like I did before. Oh, you can't see anymore. But um, anyway, I have a lot of options there. And I'm going to have a look at that. First, I want to get things cut off. So I'm going to put a little bit more here. Now, I don't want to get too much because right now I need to get a guy who looks like he's a bulky dude. So what I see is that this angle right here, I hope I'm aiming that properly for you, but this angle right here curves down too fast. I'm going to cut it probably right about here. Get one button of the shirt, I don't think the second one, but it curves down too fast. So this needs to come out towards me a little bit to have the feeling that it's going towards the pec muscles and the nipples actually to the end of that. And then after that it'll start going down. But I, I'm, I'll probably just end up doing this in clay because that's the easiest thing at this point. And I'll do clean up things like take this off of here and stuff like that, you know, the, off the top of the clay. Uh, I don't really need that, but I don't need to do that in the camera. All right, so let's see, we've got this. That's my glove. <laughs> All right, do I want to deal with the spine though? Because he's going to have a shirt on. The, you know, the nice thing is, I can cut through the clay, if I want to take this off later, I can cut through the clay and through the, the foam here to get what I want. So I may, I'm not really sure about this bulk, but one problem is that I'm having is that I had intended the original backing to end here. And thus, I sort of made it curve around sort of to act like more like a frame instead of acting like the body just got cut off. Cause I personally don't like those Greek sculptures where they, they cut off the hands. I mean, they're doing it to save marble, okay? Use the torso as one big block of marble, but something skinny like this, you could take a smaller piece of marble and maximize the use out of it, and then later attach it on. But when they they lose the arms and there's just this card, it strikes me as too violent, and it, it doesn't make me feel like it's a composition. It really, to be the composition, it needs to have the whole arm. If the piece loses the arm, then I just feel like, ugh, that's brutal. But everybody has their own taste. And so if I took this back a little bit this way, see he's got some curve, this, this curving in too much, but to make a jump from there to there, you see, that's just a little bit, it's not going to work. I want a nice smooth feel up into his back. However, his neck is actually really up here, so it could be, could be I could be fine with this. So I think for right now I'm just going to leave this as it is, cut off this little weird flaky thing. It's not really doing anything for me. It might be even blocking. So here, all right, so here again, we're not going to have the arm coming forward, so this part here is going too far forward. So if I put the arm on the back, the arm's going to come this way, and I made, I made a line right here. So I want to, let's get rid of this here. Mm -hmm. 
this. I'm carving parallel to this chest that I've already built in. I know I'm going to fill the chest out a little bit, but uh, again, the foam has to be underneath. for the arm on this side. Okay, so this is half of the body. The arm's going to come a little bit up this way, so I don't need this much either. have to remember also that I made him larger than life, so his arm is going to be larger than life as well. That's why I don't want to cut it too narrow. This, I think. Okay, so I think this is still, let's go back. Just arm if it comes down this way. So you can see his arm is also also it's slanting down, so it's going to come. This is probably not necessary here, but uh, anyway, let's cut more of this at an angle like this. I have a curving arm. All right. I don't have enough protection on the floor. I need to get another sheet down there. I think. thing is, though, I, I have to correct myself now because I thought my next step is to cover this with wax. The clay will cut into the hard paraffin wax. It's going to be relatively thin, but it's a pain to cut into that. And so I want to really try to get this as close to the form that I want so that the wax can seal everything up and then I'll make up the difference in clay. Okay, so I put this little kind of rounded out part uh, to do the arm here. And you see I just want to sort of tack it on to give me some bulk in that area, okay? And um, I the other time I did it I used metal. This time I'm going to use the toothpicks that I used to hold on the plastic. Um, remember when I used the plastic wrap to sort of shape the foam as it when it was still wet? I don't know if this is going to work, but you know, I'm kind of... My curiosity sometimes gets me in trouble. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. I'm just going to use this because really my, my theory is that once I pour the hot wax over it, the wax will stick to itself and it may dissolve this a little bit. I don't know. I'm going to put these in. But I kept these that were used before dirty because I don't want to put them in my mouth and clean my teeth with them, do I? Okay. I hope that's good enough. The thing is, I'm going to have a problem because there's no board here. It's not going to catch any of the wax when it drips down. Temperature is a big, big deal. So what I have been doing now, let's see, do I have enough arm? I think for now, right now I'm just going to leave that as is. All right, so I use the double boiler. You never boil, uh, you never try to melt wax directly on a stove. I used my gas board burner and I had a big tub of water underneath. And then I put this on here. Luckily, this pan has a little bit of a shape here for the pouring thing. And what that does is, and the little lip, what it does is it sets on the edge of the pan there. And then um, the handle, of course, keeps it from flopping down in there. So I don't know if you can see this or not. Okay, I'm afraid to tilt it because it's too full. But the wax is basically liquid there. Okay. 
So I'm going to stick my paintbrush in here because this is a wax dedicated paintbrush. You always try to get your stuff dedicated. But you see it's, it's too hard to actually give me flexibility. So I'm going to stick it in the hot wax now. The other thing I'm going to do, it's a little hot but it's not going to burn this thing, is I've got some of this blue color that I bought for putting into the mold. When I start making the rubber mold, I need to know how many layers I'm putting in there. So the color helps me know, did I cover that place or did I cover that? So you do alternate colors and then you know what you've covered or not. But anyway, I bought this the other day. I'm just going to put a wee bit of color in here because this paraffin wax is just white. So when I cover this light yellow, it's not going to necessarily give me what I want. I don't want to put my finger in the wax. And stir this around a bit. And, just, okay, this color doesn't seem to be working too well for this. So let me put in one of my burgundy burnt beeswax candles. This is a, a dyed wax. And I don't like to waste beeswax on stuff like this, honestly. But I thought maybe the color would help. I may just blow off the color. maybe Because uh, I don't want to... This blue I bought for the rubber, and I don't want to have to buy another one. Because it's a small amount, and I don't have any idea how far it's going to go. But this is where my cheapness comes in, you see. Also because this time of year, I use this stuff to burn in my fireplace, because beeswax is a cleaner burn. And, um... Alright, so let's just... See what that works. Um, Alright, put on the junky clothes. I wouldn't normally have on a nice sweater when I'm here, but um, I went into town today, so it's kind of... Alright, let's close this up, because I do like this sweater. You always want to protect the things you like. I like that saying that I just heard uh, recently on Facebook. It was uh, something going around. It was a quote from somebody that naturally I can't remember. But it says, if you like a flower, you pluck it. If you love a flower, you water it. Something to think about. But yet, here I have my dying tulips here. Alright, so my wood burning stove here is actually pretty good. You can see I'm melting clay on these two little pieces so that I can really smoosh things around. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I, I had to use the boiler because the wax was so chunky and I didn't want to wait all day for this. But when temperature is everything, when this thing is really hot, this stuff gets almost soupy and I have to move it up here so it can um, not, not get too liquidy. Also, if I touch my finger to it, you can burn your skin. So I don't want to do that. But um, I want this to kind of keep the thing here. So I put a couple of extra pieces of wood in there to keep everything warm. And now I want to remember that I'm going to have a problem with this wax here because it's. I don't think this is going to actually work so well. But I need, when the wax starts dripping, I need to have something going on there. I don't need this. So the goal with the wax is to fill up these crevices here, and in this case also use as a glue to, to adhere to this. But also all of these little holes that are in the wax, I want to fill them up so that the clay doesn't feel the need to go into them. The clay may or may not go into them, depends on how hot I, I have it when I apply it. Now you see how the wax is dripping right there? So again, temperature is everything. I want to start at the top knowing that gravity is going to push the wax down into the cavities. Uh, and put that, let it kind of drip in there. But what I'm really looking for, see here where I cut it, it's a fresh cut, it's very, very soft there. I want to seal all of that up. I really wish I'd made a bigger board now, I just, anyway. Um, I want to seal all this up because the clay is going to sort of, I don't know, can you imagine rubbing clay on a cake? That's kind of the same texture that this is. So really, I want to use the wax when it's really, really hot to go seal up all of these new fresh cut edges that I made. Okay. Now, I'm not worried about the wax that's dripping on the board because I can scrape it off later, use it again, remelt it, whatever I need to do. I'm more worried about this stuff on the arm because it's going to drip onto the floor. And even if I have a piece of paper down there, it's not really enough. And I started tripping over the paper, so I just decided I'm not going to worry about it anymore. But if I can get past this stage, 
it, it'll be less. When I do the mold, I'll put a new thing on there because I, it's not, first of all, it's not my house, but frankly, even if it was my house, I would still want to protect it. So I want to put all of this stuff in there. See, it would have been cool if this was color blue because then I could tell, have I been here yet or not? So the liquid stuff, like I said, I want to try to get all of the newly cut areas first as well as pouring this down in here to get the adhesive to this. But what I'm hoping is that as the wax cools, then I can start pushing bigger chunks into that. But the thing is, it'll be the liquid that's really going to make the connection between these parts here. So that's what I want to focus on at that point for that. All right, so let's turn this puppy around. Okay, so I've got some cut areas up in here. So now I'm just going to let that go because I don't have three hands. Do you? <laughs> Let's hope not. Unless you're something else. Or maybe really good with your toes. Maybe that would work. See how the wax is sort of getting cold now? It's going to heat off. I can just dip that back in there. All right. So I'm painting all of my cut edges, starting at the top, working down, trying to keep as much of the wax to where I don't have to do so much cleanup. See, if I can cover that hole there, I don't need to go all the way into the hole, but, you know, because let's face it, wax is, paraffin wax at least is inexpensive, but why, why waste it? I'm not into waste too much. It's bad enough, this is probably not the most ecological friendly project ever. I have to remember my posture, I bend over too much. It's important to keep good posture, really, and I don't think I've ever had it, really. But I'll tell you, after my accidents, it became quite clear that I need to pay attention. Only you live in your body, so you should take care of it. It's got to serve you well. feel that the wax is starting to kind of gloss over a little bit, which is obviously what I want it to do. But of course, I don't want it to do it until I'm ready for it to do it. I want to use all of this liquid stuff to get into this new cut. Cover up my cake, as it were. Okay, let's put that underneath there to catch some of this. And you can probably see how holy that is in there. The liquid won't fill up holes. What happens is when it gets sort of to the semi-solid state and pliable, that's when you can push it in. And uh, that didn't sound right, did it? <laughs> Oops. All right. Well, I do have fresh cuts on here, so let's put something onto this front. I think I've got all the new stuff covered up. And you can see on the edge of my brush, you see how the wax that's gone up into the ferrule stuff has actually gotten pretty solid. But there will be a point, oh wait, that's untouched. There will be a point in which 
It's cool enough to the touch and very malleable. And that's kind of the little sweet spot uh, because I can do a lot more with that. But like I said, the, the liquid absorption is, is a good sweet spot as well. It's just temperature is everything and conditions are right. And it depends on what stage of the game you're in and which one you want, you know? Here and from this side, I'm going to pour in can you see? What I think is it's a little bit too liquid still to do what I want it to do. I hope it did the stuff that I already wanted. But you can see, can you see how it's now getting a little harder? There's just still a little bit of liquid in there. So now what I can do, leave that aside. Maybe I'll take this smaller brush here. And I'm going to start taking some of this stuff that's a little bit cooler here, you see, and mush it in there. Put the pan underneath to catch the drippings as much as possible. And I probably should have put this in to make it a little more pliable. So my goal, again, is to cover a lot of these jiggy jaggies. I can see I also don't have enough wax. And I think I melted the other wax to do this the same process to the earlier part of the game. See now it's too cold. I'm afraid to stick my hand in where it's where it's warm. I don't want to get burnt. Don't like burns on sensitive fingertips, or frankly anywhere. pull off in this direction because it may pull this off, which is of course anti to my desire. You know, this takes a lot of patience, but you know, it's one of those things where you say time or money, and I tend to be on the cheap side with the money because, to be honest, the artist's life is a little bit of a risk more than other people's because you just don't know when you're going to have income and when you're not. So I tend to be a big saver, always have been actually. And um, the rainy days do come. That's why I appreciate your support on Patreon, patreon.com slash Kelly Borshine. And I put a little more articles there up there than I do for just this. Alright. I don't have it hot enough to melt this big block here, so it could be that there will be a point where this stuff isn't going to come off this brush because the brush is so full of cold wax. and. Um, I'll have to put it back in and heat it up again and start the process. But I can already tell that I don't have enough wax to do my fantasy fill. But it's okay. You know, I, the main thing I did was I got the sealer done on the cake stuff, the newly cut foam that had the raw material showing again. Spongy and absorbent and, and coming off on your fingers. All right. And like I said, I tend to dedicate tools. Once I've used this for wax, I'm never going to go back and use it for painting, that's for sure. That's okay, because, you know, they're cheap brushes, you can tell by the quality of it. But, to be fair, I'm, I'm brutal on brushes. 
Okay, so I'm going to continue working on this, and but you get the idea, right? So put your likes, comments, subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel to go to Patreon, check it out. And you can also go to my site at borshamarts.com and see some finished artworks. Thank you so much. Ciao for now. It's soft again. See, I can dig in. It's liquid underneath. This is perfect for modeling. I'm just using a wooden stick. object is to fill up all of these little weird holes that I don't want the clay to get into. I love working with my hands, <laughs> even if it's a mess. Maybe because it's a mess. It's really perfect right now, isn't it? I'm just smoothing in there, getting into those grooves. It's a little bit hot, it's actually burning. A little bit softer now, a little bit softer now. Hey, hey. You know, kind of going right in there. Sort of glosses over some of the crevices and stuff. Gets the material to work a little farther. This is plenty strong to support the mold and the clay, so I don't need to worry about that. But what a space saver in it. And, um, all that. Again, I want to focus on filling the top areas because the client wants me to cut it off right about here. So, if I'm going to have to prioritize materials, that's what it's going to be. And I find it easier to clean my fingers dropping it into the pan instead of trying to put it into the sculpture. It's just too much to do at once, so drop it all in there. Get it off of the wooden stick. And then... See a little plug here go in. Push that into all that. Okay. Let's see if I have any obvious really bad things. Maybe this one. That's a little precarious. Be careful with that kind of stuff. It's not liquid now, so I can do something dangerous like that, but I don't really want to do that if it's liquid. Because it's just asking to fall over, isn't it? 
might burn my toes, it could just, but it will certainly make a mess and it will certainly cause me to lose some wax, which I don't need to do because I don't have that much of it. Let's dig in here and put some of this in here. The coloring of the wax didn't work. You need something that actually is probably designed to enter wax. You can see how the blue didn't really get in there too much, did it? So I want to push this in enough, hot, I want to push this in enough so that it actually grabs hold of the foam. And that's why it's kind of nice that the foam's not even surface. It gives a whole lot of tooth to be grabbing onto these other materials. And I don't really want to make this smooth smooth either because I want the clay to stick onto it. So um, it's when perfect is actually, not being perfect is actually the best course of action. And again, at this temperature, everything is so, it can be working great, and then the next minute it's too cold. And then when you heat it up, it's too hot, and you wait exactly the moment, the right moment to go to town. Good fill in there, but I think that'll be better with clay. Let's put this. to support that pan because it's not that hot to push up against. So I'm almost out of wax. You can see how this is going though. Thanks for watching. Ciao!